Welcome to Windows CMD tutorial number 4, Network Tools. In this video, we'll be moving on to the kinds of tools you might be using in a network admin role. Thankfully, a much shorter video this time. Every video have all slideshows and code available in the description. An important topic that I left out of the general tasks is the keyboard shortcuts at your disposal. I briefly talked about the tab key shortcut, which will auto-complete the folder or file that you're currently writing. You can run into issues when there is more than one thing with a similar name. Another incredibly useful tool is scrolling through the history of your commands you've used this session. The up key will scroll upwards through your history, and the down will scroll back down to the more recent commands. The final crucial key shortcut is the abort current command process. To abort a command that's taking too long or in an infinite loop, we can force the program to close by holding control and pressing the C key. These last two commands are fun to mess around with, but honestly I can't tell you a time where I've used either of them. Often when having to do any network setup or when diagnosing network problems, you need to check the IP settings on the computer to check if it's configured correctly. IP config allows us to check all kinds of config settings for all our network cards or interfaces. IP config also lets us check and refresh the computer's DNS cache and DHCP allocations. IP config follows our pattern, command then option. There are several options we can use. Keep in mind that flushing your DNS cache will have a resulting effect. To be safe, try to only use the flush option when CMD is not running as administrator. Let's try a few of these commands out and see what kind of results we get. Okay, so we'll come over to CMD and try IP config by itself. And we can see we get all of our adapters and some information about them, just a summary. So we can see what our IPv6 address is, what our uh, IPv4 address is, our subnet mask, our default gateway, etc. Uh, and if we use IP config forward slash all, we get a bit more of a detailed uh, output. So as you can see, you've got lease obtained, lease expires, etc. Um, whether we're using uh, DHCP enabled, yes or no. Uh, auto configuration is enabled. Um, our DNS servers. Um, and whether our NetBIOS is over TCP IP etc. And you also get a description of the uh, adapter on your computer. Cool. Let's clear the screen. Come back. A very useful command that many people forget about is nslookup. With nslookup we can search any domain name and our default DNS server will look up that IP address that is associated with the domain name. This can be quite useful if you're experiencing DNS issues. Let's give it a try, as that should give you a very good idea of what to expect from this command. Okay, so we'll come back over to CMD, and let's try nslookup google.com. And we run that, and we see we get the server is uh, google-public-dns-a.google. So I'm using Google as my default DNS. And the answer that we get back from uh, my Google DNS is all the IP addresses that it knows google.com from. So this is an IP address for a Google server, this is an IP address for a Google server that the DNS server wants me to know about. Cool. Next we have a very useful tool called Netstat. Netstat lists all of your computer's active network connections. The command shows us the protocol in use, the local and remote IP addresses and ports, as well as the connection status. We can get even more information out of this command by using the dash A option to list all currently listening or running connections or sockets. Also, we can change this option to the dash AO option, which will also show the process ID of the program using that connection, which is very useful for finding any suspicious or unnecessary open ports on your computer. Let's give the command a shot and list all of our currently active network connections. Okay, so we'll come over to CMD, have the screen cleared, all right, and we'll type netstat, dash a. Uh, it'll start uh, looking at our computer and seeing what sockets and ports we have open. All right, and we can scroll up and we can see that there's some, um, some unconnected UDP sockets uh, and we've got some TCP sockets that are listening uh, on certain addresses. So we've got a bunch of local addresses that are just trying to talk to the computer itself. And then we've got some uh, more remote stuff going on. So my address is trying to communicate with some outside foreign addresses. 
And we've got a couple established, but most of them have closed and have stopped that connection. Cool. So if we do the same command but put an O on the end, we get the process ID that's using those ports. I'll control C to cancel this. Cool. We'll clear the screen and we'll jump back over to the slideshow. I should mention that I use this command quite often. All right, now for an easy to remember command that you'll probably use many times, ping. Ping allows us to check a connection with a computer or server slash website. The ping command sends a message to a destination address and a response comes back. You can think of a submarine making a ping noise and when it hits something, it comes back and lets the submarine know there's something there. I know in the past when I was testing what cable is mine on the network switch, I ran an infinite ping with the dash T option and when the ping started timing out, I knew I'd found my cable. Let's give ping a quick shot. So we'll come back over to our uh, command prompt and we'll type ping and we'll do google.com. Uh, I'll say pinging and we get our replies back. So we're sending 32 bytes of data and it's taking 17 milliseconds with a time to live of 59. And 9 milliseconds, 9 milliseconds, 13 milliseconds. And it gives you an average, the maximum, the minimum, etc. Cool. Next, we have the command that works very similar to ping called trace RT or path ping. Trace RT stands for trace route. Traceroute sends a ping to a server or destination just like ping. However, it tells everything that it passes through to send a ping back to us with how long it took to get there. This is really great for testing issues with your connection to a server or for how many routers you pass through to get to a website or friend. The structure for this command is just like ping. Trace RT, then a web address or IP address. I'll let you test this one on your own. Alternatively to trace RT, you can use the path ping, which is a relatively new addition to Windows that works very similar to trace RT. However, it takes longer and gives you many more stats to look at. Finally, let's look at the ARP command. The ARP command allows us to view the tables our computer holds of the address resolution protocol, or ARP tables for short. The ARP tables store all of the network and physical addresses of other devices on the local network that your computer knows about. We can view the ARP tables using the command ARP space dash A. So let's give it a shot. So we'll come over to our CMD. We'll type ARP space dash A. All right. And when we run that, we see we get our interfaces. So here's my uh, my main interface. And it's got my uh, a list of all of the devices on the network that I know about. So I've got some static ones that it knows about, so broadcast addresses uh, and a couple of other um, stuff that's used for VN, uh, VMs. Uh, we've also got some other hosts on the network uh, with their IP addresses and their physical addresses, as well as all of your other interfaces if you have any. Cool. You should never need to manually add an ARP entry, as all modern network cards have ARP protocol chips that handle the protocol functionality. But if you need to, you can add manual entries with the dash S option seen here. Alright, great work. You may never use some of these commands in your line of work, but you know they're there now. The next thing we'll be looking at is using our new skills to create batch scripts to automate simple tasks. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.